Hey there, welcome to Flearn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flearn.com where we make learning fun. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to match fonts from an existing photo in Photoshop. So with our sample image for today, we got an old gas pump and I've got some type here. I wanna match this font and add a little bit of my own text. So the first thing to do is be sure to click on your background layer and then we wanna go up to type and then down to match font. Now, when we click on this, it says we're gonna have a little bit of a box here. And in fact, if we zoom out, we can see we do now have a box around our type. I'm gonna make this just a little bit smaller to include just the font that I want to match. Let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna bring that right down there. So here we can see this is all of Adobe's guesses as to what is gonna match this font. And if you are a Creative Cloud subscriber and have access to Adobe's type kit, you can actually download these directly into Photoshop just by clicking on this down arrow, which is incredibly cool. Now I'm just gonna do a little screenshot here. So it's gonna tell me Balboa medium and then input sans and then input mono. Okay, that way I can kind of remember what it actually told me. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on these downloads. All you have to do is simply click right here on this little uh, cloud icon and you can see it's adding them to my Creative Cloud library. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all of these just in case one looks better than the other, I can then go ahead and decide on them. So Adobe is basically analyzing the font and thinking what might be the best. So we're gonna start with this Balboa and we're gonna take a look at input mono. Let's go ahead and hit okay there and our font is now matched. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. We're gonna hit T for the type tool and simply start typing. So I'm gonna start typing. In this case, I'm just gonna paste directly in for my clipboard. And this is, as you can see, if I go to window and then down here to character, it actually started typing with input mono compressed already selected. So because I use that match font dialog, it automatically switched to the font that it matched. It's incredibly cool. Now, in this case, it's using the bold and italic version of it. I'm just gonna change it to the bold version and let's see what this does. Maybe black looks a little bit better. That's a little bit thicker. All right, let's go ahead and use our move tool now. And I just wanna bring this right down here. Let's kind of move some things around and see how this looks. I need to make my type just a little bit smaller and we can see, all right, is this starting to look pretty good? Well, we have a G here and a G on the original. Now, as you can see, they're not exactly perfect, but they are a pretty good match. Let's go ahead and refer back to the other font that it suggested as well. Now, as you remember, I took a screenshot of the fonts it suggested, just so I could remember, because we're busy. We don't always remember a giant list of fonts. Here it says Balboa Medium. So let's go ahead back into Photoshop. I'm just gonna simply duplicate this layer by hitting Controller Command J, and let's see what Balboa medium looks like. You can simply start typing it in here, B-A-L-B, -B, Balboa medium. And then you can see, okay, which one of these looks a little bit better? There's a medium and then there's a bold one. All right, so we can decide, hey, which one of these actually looks uh, a little bit more like the original font? And in this case, I'm gonna go with this Balboa and we're gonna go with bold here. So we're just gonna make that original one invisible for now. Now, there's a lot of things that we can continue to change. Let's go ahead and just create a new layer right above my background layer. I'm just gonna clear myself a little bit of space real quick. So I'm just gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool. I'm just gonna clone stamp this away. All right, we're gonna reveal this in just a second. I just wanna compare these two fonts. Okay, so quality guaranteed. Well, a couple of things you're gonna see right off the bat. The first is that the sharpness on the new font is way sharper than my photograph. So I gotta blur it just a little bit. We also have to change the size and I need to change the spacing in between my letters. So if you need to do either of those, you can simply go to window and down to character. So let's go ahead and do that. I already have this menu open. Let's go ahead and close it. So we're gonna go to our window and then down to character. There we go. And here's where you can change the spacing between your letters. So if I change this to zero, you can see my letters are closer together. All right, if I change this, maybe we're gonna go to 25, they're a little bit farther apart. Let's go ahead and change our size, just a little bit smaller, and we're gonna change this from 25 back to 50 again, and I think that looks pretty good. Now let's hit Control or Command T for our transform. 
We're gonna rotate this around just a little bit to match the rotation of our image. And that looks pretty good. And I wanna change the color. Right now it's a perfect black. It should be a little bit more of this gray color. So let's click here right where it says color. We're gonna click there. And then I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool to simply click on this dark gray color. There we go. That looks pretty good. So now with quality guaranteed selected, it looks pretty good. But as we just mentioned, it needs a little bit of a blur and it's also gonna need some texture. So let's go ahead and give it a blur. I'm gonna to go to filter down here to blur and we're just simply gonna to go to a Gaussian blur. Now, because this is text, it's gonna ask us if we want to rasterize it, which converts it to normal pixels, or if we wanna make it a smart object. I highly recommend using a smart object. That way you can change the text at any time if you want. Let's go right here to convert to smart object. There we go. It is now a smart object and I can blur it. So let's say we blur it way too much, no big deal. Because it is a smart object, all you have to do is check your smart filters, go to your Gaussian blur. Let's just double click right where it says Gaussian blur and look at this, I can change that blur amount at any time. This is gonna keep you from getting stuck with any particular setting. You can change it at any time, very helpful for workflow. Now, as we mentioned, you can also change the text. In this case, I have to double click right here on my smart object there we go, you can see we have quality guaranteed. And if I double click on there, you could see I could even put an exclamation point at the end, maybe make this a little bit smaller. There we go, save this, Controller Command S and then Controller Command W to close that out. And you can see now we have an exclamation point at the end, but the blur is still intact. All right, now we're looking pretty good. I'm overall really happy with this, but we do have to have a little bit more texture in order for this to look realistic. So let's go ahead and bring back that little font that we had earlier. We're gonna put quality guaranteed right up here. And now let's go ahead and add our texture. You know what? I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller too. There we go, that's looking a little bit better. And now that I made it smaller, the blur looks like it's a little bit too much. So that's where we go and double click on that Gaussian blur and I just changed this to be a little bit less of a blur. That's gonna make it look better. So if I wanna go ahead and add a texture to this letter, what I'm gonna do is look for areas in my image that actually have a similar texture. And this area looks pretty good. Look at all that beautiful texture we have to work with. So I'm gonna to go to my background layer. I'm gonna use my marquee tool right up here and then just go ahead and make a selection around some texture that I like. I'm gonna hit Controller Command J what that's gonna do is it's gonna duplicate that selection to a new layer, and then let's go ahead and just put this all the way back here up at the top. All right, so I'm gonna just give this a name. We'll just call this texture. There we go, and we're gonna rotate this around to have it cover up my letters. Now, in this case, you can see it's completely covering the letters and it's visible everywhere else. We wanna go ahead and use what's called a clipping mask. Now, this is going to allow this texture to only be visible where quality guaranteed is visible. So to create a clipping mask, simply right click on the texture layer and go down to where it says create clipping mask. There we go. Now you can see the texture is only in fact visible where my underlying layer is visible, which is fantastic. In this case, I want the bright areas of my texture to be visible and the dark areas to not be visible. And screen is the perfect blending mode to get that job done. So we're gonna change our blending mode for our texture layer. We're gonna go from normal down here to screen. Now, in this case, it's just showing up everywhere, okay? Because we don't really have that many dark areas. So what I'm gonna do is make more of this texture darker. And I'm gonna do that with a levels adjustment. Simply hit Controller Command L. There we go. And we can see my levels adjustment. Now I can make my darks a little bit darker by clicking on this slider here. There we go. And right about there, we are seeing, hey, that's starting to look pretty good, right? We have some of the texture showing up and some of it disappearing. So there we go. The texture is now only visible where our word is visible and I can move it around and it's really nice. It did make it pretty yellow right? We don't really want it to be yellow. So I'm going to hit Control or Command U for saturation. You can also go to image, down to adjustments, and over to hue slash saturation. And I'm going to simply bring my saturation way, way down. There we go. And that looks much better. So now we can see I have the actual texture. Let's just zoom in so we can see this. 
I have the actual texture from my image over top of the text that I've added. And it's looking really good. In fact, I think it looks pretty similar to our original text. So we can see not only did we match the font, but we added a little bit of texture over top. And if you wanted to, you could hit Control or Command J to simply duplicate that texture and then put more of the texture. You can move it around and simply add any type of texture to this text. So here we have our before with no texture. We have a little bit of texture and then I just duplicated the texture for a little bit more. We could lower the opacity there. I think that's looking really, really good. Now it's time for the bonus round. If we want to add a little bit of glare to the text, as we can see right here on this R and right here on this O, we have a little bit of a glare there. We can actually do that with this text as well. We're simply going to create a new layer hit B for the brush tool, and I'm going to hold Alt or Option to sample this color. Then I can start painting it over right here over top of my image. And then you guessed it, we're going to change our blend mode from normal to screen. And we're going to make sure that this is clipped so it's only visible where the text is visible. Again, right click, go down all the way to where it says create a clipping mask. And then it's only going to be visible right there. And check this out. I can even move it and it's only going to be visible where my text is visible. So there we have before and our after. Perfectly matched to the rest of our image. Hey, looks like it was there for begin with. Don't forget, you guys can download this sample image and PSD on flurn.com for free. Just follow the link right down below. Thanks again. I'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone.